Well, over the last decade and a half, we've had major uh, improvements in the treatment of neovascular macular degeneration, but we've also learned uh, that we also have unmet needs, and I'd really put it in three different silos. The first silo is simply obtaining better efficacy. Uh, the second would be uh, attaining sustainability with greater durability of the drugs. And finally, is uh, attaining drugs that will allow us to maintain that increased visual acuity improvement over a long term, maybe 10 to 20 years. Rolexizumab is the first single-strand antibody fragment developed uh, in medicine, let alone in the eye. Uh, it's a very special drug because as a single-strand antibody fragment, it's very small. It's only 26 kilodaltons, so that means that uh, a lot of the drug can get into the target very quickly and stay there for a long time. So in that respect, uh, it should give us uh, better durability and possibly uh, better efficacy. And uh, this has been shown in several trials, at least the durability portion and signals towards possible better efficacy. In the Hawk and Harrier studies, uh, it was the greater durability uh, in uh, more than 50% of patients that was seen. Well, in the Hawk and Harrier studies, which were phase three registration trial uh, trials, uh, broloxizumab met the primary endpoint at week 48 of non-inferiority. That's the first, that's the first uh, line. The second uh, is that in doing so, after the initial loading phase, uh, more than 50% of patients were, to be, were able to be maintained on acute 12-week dosing versus a flibercet. Uh, that's the second one. But to me, the most important, as a clinician, the most important highlight of that study uh, was, were the results at week 16. And in week 16, in a head-to-head -head comparison, uh, broloxizumab proved to be superior in every anatomic parameter, uh, meaning the OCT parameters, uh, to a flibercet. And this continued uh, up to week 48, even though over 50% of patients on broloxizumab were on Q12-week dosing. Well, what we do know is that this is a heterogeneous disease and not everybody behaves the same way. So a disease activity assessment was put in to appropriately extend the patients who should be appropriately extended. Um, and not everybody should be extended and therefore the disease activity assessment was placed. And the question that you asked is what was the reliability of that disease activity assessment? So what we did was to look at patients who went through the first cycle of Q12 week dosing and asked how many of those patients continued on Q12 week dosing. And what we found was that in both the studies, over 80% of the patients who initially were successful in Q12 week dosing continued on Q12 week dosing. So the predictability of that, of identifying patients who would do well with Q12 week dosing was, was in my opinion, uh, quite impressive, over 80%. Well, I, I look forward to getting it in my hands. As a clinician, uh, what I will do is to have a more efficient way of suppressing a validated target, the validated target being VEGFA. So what it will do for my clinic, it hopefully allow more patients to get a better response and the appropriate patients to get a longer durability of effect.